Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Parish of St. Anne's again. My name is Father Don Byers. I serve as the priest and pastor of this parish, and it's such a delight to be with you for another video on the faith and theology of the Anglican Church. So last week, in our first video, I spoke a little bit about some of the liturgical changes that we were seeing as we entered into this month of September, and talked a little bit about the season of creation. I talked about liturgical colors, and I realized as I was doing that video, I used that word liturgy or liturgical a number of times in the video and realized that for a lot of us, we might not actually know what that word is. We hear it used a lot, we talk about it a lot, but we don't always actually know what that word means. So today I thought I'd just briefly talk about what liturgy means and what it is and how we see it unfold in the life of our church and in other Christian churches throughout the world. So liturgy. Liturgy is a Greek word that simply means work of the people. So work of the people. It was a term that was used in civil society at a time when Greek was the common language of the people of that day. Over time, as the Christian church slowly emerged and began in its life, it began to understand that its public worship, the celebration of Holy Eucharist, the morning prayer, evening prayer, and the other sacraments were all liturgical acts. In other words, they were acts of the people of God, the Holy Church, in prayer and worship before God. So over time, and now to this day, we understand liturgy as the work of the people, all of us offering our hymns and praise of sacrifice and thanksgiving unto God for what God has done. So liturgy is very specific to certain actions that we do as a church. The most important liturgy, of course, is the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the heart and source of all the Christian life. It is the most important celebration in the life of every Christian. That meal, that celebration, that holy sacrifice of praise in which we offer to God and recall Jesus' life-giving act of giving of himself in, in bread and wine and also on the cross and his resurrection. So the Eucharist is really the highest form of liturgy. It is the one part excellent. It's the one that all of us should live. But there are other things that are considered liturgy as well. Those things would be morning prayer and evening prayer. They would also include whenever we celebrate the sacraments, such as baptism, marriage, ordination, uh, even the anointing of the sick. Uh, these sacraments all are liturgical acts now you might be wondering if those things are all liturgies if those things are all work of the people what about prayer services what about other sort of prayer functions that the church does those wouldn't necessarily be called liturgies per se they would be considered probably more paraliturgies they often will follow a similar pattern but they wouldn't be liturgy themselves Another qualifying character of liturgy is that it's not only the work of the entire people, but it's the work of the entire church. So not just the work of St. Anne's, you don't have to forget the tractor there backing up, not the work of just St. Anne's, but also of all churches throughout the world. This includes not just Anglican, but Catholic, Lutheran, um, Orthodox, all of us, all of us celebrate liturgy. And the Eucharist, when I celebrate Eucharist, or when we pray morning and evening prayer, we're actually praying from a common prayer books that are used throughout the world or have a common shape and form. Let me say something about that. All liturgies are first and foremost rooted in the Word of God. So every time you and I come together for liturgy, to pray the sacred liturgy, we always begin with the breaking open of the Word of God, the proclamation of the scriptures. 
Now, of course, this actually comes from our Jewish brothers and sisters, who, as many of you may know, Christian liturgy really evolved out of synagogue worship and even temple worship, in a sense. So in Jewish synagogues, the Holy Torah, the scriptures, are always proclaimed before the people. So too here in the Christian church. So all liturgies, all of them, always have, always have and begin with the reading of scripture. And it always includes a sermon and prayers to the people of God. When liturgy includes a sacrament, the sacrament always takes place after the proclamation of the Word of God. So we proclaim the Word, and then we have a response. And that response would either be baptism, confirmation, holy orders, Eucharist, all that. That's all in response to the Word of God. So that's what defines what liturgy is. Now, liturgies can look very different in different places. Even in the Anglican Church, we were talking about this other night with some of our uh, Christian ed group. Here at St. Anne's, we were sort of located in the middle of the road, what they traditionally called Broad Church. We wear vestments, we have hymns and music, a choir and whatnot. But you can go to some churches which are much more colorful and elaborate, uh, which will have very elaborate vestments, will have incense, bells. We sometimes use those as well, but not always. Um, you can also go to some Anglican churches in which the priest may be simply vested in a black cassock like what I'm wearing with a white surplice and a stole or a preaching scarf. So they can look very differently. Also, we also respect and understand that Catholics and Lutherans and Orthodox also celebrate liturgy. And there too you will see some differences in the appearance and even in some of the prayers. But again, the same structure is there. The breaking open of the word and the celebration of the sacraments or the response of some sort. The key thing that I want to leave you with, liturgy is always the work of the people. It's not just the priest, it's not just the choir, it's all of us. All of us are celebrating liturgy. So when you come to St. Anne's or when you go to any church, I invite you to remember that you too are an active participant in the sacred liturgy to listen attentively to the prayers and to the readings, to respond fully with body and voice and to the prayers and praise, because it really is your work. It's the prayer of the people of God, the Holy Church lifted up in praise and thanksgiving to God himself. My friends, thank you for joining us for another video. Forgive all the noise. We live here at St. Anne's right across from Cadbury factory, which is delightful in one way because of the chocolate smell every day. It makes me hungry. Thus, I have to be careful, otherwise my cassock will get too uh, tight on me if I eat too much chocolates. Uh, so we're grateful for them, but it also means we get a little noise like you're hearing now. But we're in the world. The church is in the world. So my friends, thank you for joining us, and join us on Sundays at 1030. May God bless you, and may God keep you always. Bye-bye.